so I'm listening to Zeitgeist, and I'm actually very intrigued by it. I think it was a very good record. I'm not sure where I would rank it among the other Smashing Pumpkins albums yet, but I'm not sure that doing so would be even be fair to Zeitgeist, to be honest with you. Because this album abs- absolutely deserves to be taken on its own accord. I noticed that a lot of people, when they when they talk about Smashing Pumpkins and they talk about the new album, they're very quick to compare to the old material. Just because Zeitgeist doesn't sound like Siamese Dream doesn't mean that Zeitgeist isn't good. It's very obvious from the very you know from the first time you listen to Zeitgeist that this is definitely a portrait of the times. For the most part, Zeitgeist is actually very current, which is unusual for a Smashing Pumpkins record. It's not typical for the Smashing Pumpkins to be uh, current. Billy Corgan as a songwriter tends to be more introspective. Listening to Zeitgeist and actually seeing Billy Corgan looking at today and commenting on today is very unusual, but also very interesting. So you're really getting a picture of 2007 through the eyes of Billy Corrigan in Zeitgeist, and it really starts right away with Doomsday Clock. Now, the Doomsday Clock as a symbol is actually something that uh, nuclear scientists came up with when they, after they developed the atomic bomb, as the uh, clock ticking midnight on the extinction of the human race. Once you created a weapon that could destroy all life as you know it, yeah, that there's only a limited amount of time that humanity has left, unfortunately. And with the first song on Zeitgeist being Doomsday Clock, this setup of we are in a time where things could end very quickly, it really sets the tone. Now, another thing you're dealing with when you're dealing with uh, Zeitgeist and the album itself is it really is a commentary on the United States and probably society on a whole, but definitely American culture and American society in 2007. There is a very interesting commentary on the current state of the United States, uh, not only by the album cover, but by the content of the album itself. The song United States, uh, almost a 10 minute, sort of on and off again, very strange song, but very cool. And so, you're listening to you know, like a song like United States, and you're really getting like there's a commentary being made here, and that comment seems to be America as a society has really reached that point where we are transitioning between capitalism and socialism. And the Roman Empire got to this point and collapsed. <laughs> Completely fell in upon itself and died. This is a, a critical point in, in what could be the future of the United States of America. So we reached this point where it could be a golden age or it could all fall apart. And what happens most of the time is people get very comfortable and ignorant. And they don't want to fight the necessary revolutions and make the necessary transitions to move on to that next stage of revolution. Zeitgeist as an album is definitely a picture of the times. And while it's while you would think a picture of the current times would be somewhat bleak, especially with the beginning track being Doomsday Clock, you actually get into Zeitgeist and you really start to see that this is a very positive album. It has a very positive outlook on a negative situation. Uh, Bring the Light. I honestly feel it's one of the best rock songs I've heard in a long, long time. Very upbeat, very cool, very optimistic. And you wouldn't expect that. Bring the Light seems very optimistic. It also seems vaguely religious. Once again, Billy Corrigan is exploring his own faith here as well. So we have a good album here that is very rock-oriented. And this is definitely guitars and drums that are driving this album and the sounds of this album. This album was created, written, and intended to be played live. This is a major change from the Machina and the Door days, where you created music that could only really be made in a studio. And then when you go and play it live, you play it, you arrange it differently. This is definitely an Adore thing, too, where you had an album that sounded great on the album, but there was very little way to translate it live. 
Machina was starting a transition, but unfortunately Machina was a lot like Adora in the sense that they wrote songs that could not be translated live. A few could. Heavy Metal Machine could. Everlasting Gaze could. Stand Inside Your Love could. But you look at Machina and even Machina 2, there aren't a lot of sounds that can be recreated live. At least not right now and not well. So when you had Zwan and you notice Zwan, Zwan was an album that was written to be created, recreated live. Zwan was a band that could back it up. Zwan as a band was created to be a live band. And when you heard Mary Star of the Sea, you were listening to a live band making a recorded album. And you really see that with Zeitgeist. Once again, you're getting an album that is being made to be recreated exactly as you heard it on the CD live. So, you know, you, you didn't have the sort of false advertising you did with a door. The best thing you can do, and you owe it to yourself to do this, is if you are a Smashing Pumpkins fan, to listen to Zeitgeist as if this were the first time you were hearing this band. Don't even think of it as the Pumpkins. Think of it as a new band you've never heard. Listen to it and give it. be fair about it. Because this album abs- absolutely deserves to be taken on its own accord. Will it be remembered as a classic? I don't know. That's, that's up to time. But right now, I would definitely say it's something I would recommend for Pumpkins fans and non-Pumpkins fans alike. I'm-